Hey folks, Robbie Payne with Chrome Unbox coming at you today with something a little bit different. An unboxing of the Google Pixel XL. Now, we know it's not a Chromebook, it's not a Chrome base or a Chrome OS device of any sort, but it does bear the Pixel name and it seems to be at the center of all the things that Google is doing from a hardware and software standpoint. So we wanted to get our hands on it, unbox it and review it, give you our opinions of it. So if you're considering buying this device, you can make an informed decision. All right, so first off, the packaging is very nice. It's very well done. Granted, the Nexus 6 um, was also a, a very well packaged, and the Nexus 6P as well were, were both very well packaged. So um, this is not a surprise, but it is very clean, very nice. We see on the outside Google Assistant, uh, Google Cast, Adream VR. The Google Assistant is built in out of the box, and it's the only device right now that has that feature, um, and it's the only Daydream ready. Uh, VR phone at this point in time as well. Nothing across the back here, just the G, G here and Pixel phone by Google. So we're going to slide this open. Full disclosure, I have uh, at least taken a little bit of a look uh, at the device already. I wanted to kind of be ready for this unboxing. Um, I haven't unboxed a phone on camera before. I've had a lot of cell phones and I've unboxed tons of Chromebooks and Chrome uh, OS devices, but I've never unboxed uh, a cell phone. So I wanted to have a little bit of a heads up here, but packaged it right back up the way it comes so that you can kind of see it is wrapped in plastic here, but we're going to set him off to the side for just now. See what comes in here. Some get started, a SIM tray, um, meet your assistant, more music. So there's probably some free music deals. Uh -huh. Then just a card that says thanks. So we get quite a few cables here. We get the USB. C to USB-A, so that would be for data transfer, that kind of thing on your device. Uh, if you want to plug it into a Chromebook or Windows machine or Mac. Uh, interestingly enough, Google is clearly going at uh, converted users, and so you can actually hook this guy into here and go USB-C to USB-C uh, to move stuff from an older device. Um, so that's kind of neat, and they provide Upon boot up, there's actually a, a, a guide that steps you through all that kind of stuff. And over in this compartment here, this block is about the same size as the one the 6P came with. Um, nothing really that interesting going on. It's USB-C. And this is a C2C cable, nice and long as well, which is good. Um, interestingly enough, they claim that you can, I haven't tested this yet, you can, you can charge you get seven hours worth of charge in 15 minutes, so that's the type of quick charge we're dealing with. Set this aside. And here we have it, guys. I'm gonna get you up close and personal here. Uh, it feels really good, uh, first blush. The, the slightly chamfered edges here. Uh, make it very uh, non-slippery, which is kind of nice. You guys have seen a lot of this stuff and in, in other reviews and leaked photos and all that kind of stuff beforehand, but we have the glass top here, fingerprint sensor, 12.3 uh, megapixel shooter here, laser autofocus, uh, no camera hump, which is nice. Um, and I saw around the internet quite a bit, there was a, a slight wedging um, to the device that allowed for a, a zero camera hump. But, and I know it's there, it's really hard to perceive in person. So if that was something that you thought uh, might be bothersome, don't be don't be bothered by it at all. You can't barely tell it's actually there. Uh, you got your usual uh, array of sensors across the front. You have a single speaker across the bottom. This go around, so no front-facing speakers. We'll talk about that in just a second. You do have a headphone jack, which is awesome. It's crazy to think that that's a feature. Uh, and then a power and volume. So nothing really out of the ordinary from a port standpoint point USB-C here. This is actually a microphone jack here. So when you play audio, you'll just hear uh, music out of that speaker. So we get it all booted up. I will say this device boots faster than most Android phones I've ever used. Um, 10, 15 seconds, something like that, which is really quick. And I want to show you how quickly, I'll try to hold it to where you can kind of see where my finger is, how quickly the fingerprint sensor works as well. So touch and on. Do it one more time touch on. So it's almost instant, uh, which is good because the the basic crop of uh, Android iOS phones out right now all can do that pretty instantaneously. So it's nice to see 
the Pixel uh, hold hold its own there. The Pixel launcher leaked out a little while ago, so you guys are familiar with that probably as well. But instead of there being a, a button to actually launch apps, um, you just swipe up from the tray anywhere and you get right to that, which is kind of cool. It uh, gives you an extra spot down here to drop another app and or folder. We have Google Now over here just like we did before. You have your search right there as you did before. It's just not a bar anymore. It's replaced by the date. Uh, but other than that, really, I mean, we're, we're seeing a pretty similar um, launcher setup. Your notifications, just like they were in 7.0, are pretty similar. You get a couple of different light flourishes, so on your brightness, um, there's some color. Um, that's a little bit different from stock Android, but other than that, we're looking at the same stuff here. Um, settings menu, all the same. Now you do have a support over here where you can do 24-7 uh, support. I will do this for the review at some point, um, and I'll, I'll attempt to do uh, chat, and I'm assuming it's only for uh, certain times of day, probably is when the chat people are available. Over on the west coast, it is 5.43 in the morning, so I doubt there's anyone there ready to talk to me about my Pixel. Um, you do have the swipe in menu. Again, this is still Android, so they're not doing a ton of different stuff here. Just a few little flourishes for um, for the Pixel specifically. So let's talk about a couple of the other design choices Google made and kind of wrap this thing up. Um, one, the, the feel of the phone overall, um, it feels really sturdy. And at the risk of maybe making a few people a little bit upset, there's, there's a certain thing, a uh, certain feel and build quality when I pick up an iPhone, for instance. Um, and to, to some extent, when I pick up uh, like a Galaxy S7 or something like that, but really more of an iPhone, uh, where it just has this incredibly sturdy build, um, and it just feels really premium, that's kind of what's going on with the Pixel. That's not to say my Nexus 6 doesn't feel great, but there's just something uh, a bit... Um, more premium feeling about this. I don't know exactly what it is, but it really does feel good in the hand. It's a little understated and maybe kind of boring for some, and there's not a lot going on, but overall the build quality is very good, um, and, it, and it feels really nice. Now some of the interesting decisions that Google made on this device are to include um, chins on both sides, bezels on both sides that are the same size, and so part of that could have been just for symmetry. Um, there are people thinking, hey, this is recycled HTC stuff, and HTC puts a button down here, so that's why that's there. I, I don't know. Um, and honestly, having the phone in my hand, it, it hasn't bothered me yet. Uh, I do wish that they would have just put front-facing speakers. Though. If you're going to have it there, why not use it? Um, and so that may be a point of contention for some people. I'm not sure. Um, the other interesting choice is now we have a rear or a downward-firing speaker. Volume wise and kind of quality wise, um, it's not that different actually when I'm holding the device next to my Nexus 6P, um, there's not a whole lot of difference. The only other thing I want to talk about is the ridiculous brightness of this screen. Now up until this point, every time that I've had a phone, my wife always has whatever Galaxy is out at the time. So she has the Galaxy, um, the Galaxy S7 Edge. and so. It honestly has had the best display I've ever seen as far as being able to get bright and keep white white and not have a kind of a yellowish hue to it. Uh, when I cranked the brightness up on this thing, it blew her uh, Galaxy S7 Edge out um, in comparison. And it's not doing so right now. We've got a lot of lighting coming down here. Um, but when I pulled just a Google search up, that's really what I want. That's just white, um, and you can just see it's, it's blowing the picture out a little bit here. Um, it is incredibly bright. I haven't gotten it outdoors yet, obviously. I haven't been out in the sun yet, but I assume it's going to uh, perform incredibly well. It actually, uh, when set next to the Galaxy S7, made the S7 Edge's screen actually look a little bit yellowish. The whites are so white, and it is still AMOLED, so you're still getting all the poppy colors, the amazing viewing angles. I mean, you can tell, like, you, you never really get an off angle view with this thing. Um, so, the screen, well done from what I've seen online so far. The steady cam and just the camera in general with its quick shot HDR always on kind of stuff seems pretty awesome and pretty legit. Here's the last thing I'm going to say in this unboxing, and one of the things that I'm going to keep in mind as I review this device it is expensive. It starts at 650 for the 32 gig 5 inch version. When you go up to the 5.5-inch uh, version, I can't remember the base price on it. I can tell you that the, the one with 128 gigs in it uh, at the larger size gets you close to $900. And 
if you add on Nexus Protect or whatever they're calling it for this, uh, which I would assume that you would for a device this expensive, you're getting up to after taxes and everything just over a thousand dollars for a phone. Um, and while I know that that's normal for iPhone users and that's not a big deal maybe, um, for us Nexus users that's a pretty big deal and so that's going to weigh pretty heavily for me in my review. So I don't want to make any bones about the fact that it's expensive. It needs to live up to that and I want to give it the chance to. I want to keep an open mind and, and if, it, if it wins me over then it will make for a pretty cool review uh, sitting juxta juxtaposed to this unboxing where I'm a little hesitant with it right now because of its price tag. If you like this video give it a thumbs up. Uh, hit subscribe down below, sorry, down below, and uh, until next time guys, we'll see you.